houses of holy. Two ninety eight. No Quarter gave its name to the album celebrating the reunion of Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. No Quarter, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant, unleaded, 1994. John Paul Jones was not too pleased at this choice of name, as Page and Plant had assured him that they had only recorded new songs. In 1995, at the ceremony in which Led Zeppelin was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Jones said, with wry humour, Thank you, my friends, for finally remembering my phone number. I'll give you a call, John. Don't worry about it. We'll do our own album. It'll be called No Quarter. The Price of Unleaded. Pathetic. 2022. Speaking of pathetic, that was one of my jokes. Ooh, the genesis. After two songs that were somewhat atypical of their repertoire, the Led Zeppelin IV were back on top form. Yet No Quarter was by no means a return to past years, either to blues rock or hard rock. Rather, it marked an explosion onto the forefront of the progressive rock scene, reminiscent of King Crimson's In the Court of the Crimson King, 1969, what an album, got that on vinyl, and even Yes, Fragile, 1971. The origins of No Quarter can be traced back to John Paul Jones. He had devised and recorded the chord progression and even written some rough arrangements in his home studio before playing the tape to the other band members during the sessions for the fourth album at Headley Grange. Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, John Bonham liked the mood of Jones's composition, which at the time had a very fast rhythm, but they decided to put it aside and rework it for the next album instead. I could carry on reading this book, but then we won't get round to learning it. So I'm gonna draw a line there. Remember, if you do like she always slamming doors. Unbelievable. It's a production studio, love. Have some respect. If you do like this book, um, there is an affiliate link in the description below. Um, I'm not affiliated with them, unfortunately. I'm affiliated with Jeff Bezos. Um, but he's a tight ass, and he don't give me very much. So I'll be having a word. Have fun. Let's start by talking about the tune-in. So when I first started working out my own little version of all the synth stuff, I put myself in E-flat standard, but then I thought, you know what, I want to make use of that low open D, so I put it in drop D or drop C sharp. It's very moody. I like it a lot. Now, I've not looked online at a live version or whether anyone else has worked out the synth part and brought it to guitar, because sometimes that kind of um, puts me off. It doesn't inspire me. I think, oh, it's already been done. What's the point? And I just had so much fun doing it. So again, sometimes you might say, oh, someone plays it this way or it's done that way. But um, I just like to find my own way and then kind of share that with you. So I'm going to show you uh, how I um, kind of transposed the synth onto guitar and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Here's the first pattern on the D minor chord. Throughout this I will just refer to the strings um, by their normal titles so it's less confusing um, but I will say like low open D because we're in drop D but it's drop C sharp. All right, yeah, I know, but just get on with it. So with that D minor chord on, you are gonna hit low D, middle D, G, high E. Take the index finger off to the open E, hit the B string, open E again, and then the B string again, but fret one. Then you're gonna hit the middle D, open G, and then the second fret. And then I've got a little bit of palm muting on the low open strings throughout, and I just go A, D a lot of the time, which I think sounds quite cool.
And that starts your next phrase, which is this. So it starts the same. Makes its way up to that second high open E, but then it changes. We hit the middle D and then pinky on the third fret of the high E. Back to the D and then the first fret of the B. And then that low A, D again. Then I just do the first pattern again. So you've got that in the back. On the fourth repeat, it starts the same again. All the way up to that second open E. And this time what you're going to do is put your pinky on the third fret of the high E, take the third finger off the B and put your index on the first fret of the B. You're going to do the middle D with the thumb and then a three finger pinch of the top three strings twice and then just back to the D. Those first four together go like this. So after you've hit the low D, again with that palm you if you can. Try not to touch the string again with the corner of your thumb because you want it droning out in the background. Um, I then grab 7th fret of the D with the 3rd finger and I put my index on 5th fret of the high E. Slide that up to 10 and 8, 12 and 10, and then 14 and 12. Straight after that, that low A and low D. Now we have this. So index finger can prep on the 5th fret of the B string, hit the middle D with the thumb, then the 5th fret of the B string, pinky on the 8th fret of the high E, off to the 5, which is kind of like a little bar that I've got prepped, back to the 7, and then you're going to go to the 3rd fret of the B and the high E. And then this time I go A, higher D, low D. Just for something a little bit different. Now we have this cool little phrase. So I start by hitting the open D, then the 10th fret. Index finger goes up to that 8th fret of the high E, it's that same shape that we had on when we were climbing up. Back and forth twice. Then you can put your pinky, or you could take your 3rd finger over, it's up to you, sometimes I change my mind, um, but to the 10th fret of the high E. Then take the 3rd finger off to reveal the open D. And uh, hit it before playing 8th fret of the B and 10th fret of the B. And then you can go low A, low D, and we're making our way back down to open position. This phrase kind of gave me a little bit of a headache at first. I was like, what's going on? Um, and I've settled for this. Okay, and uh, the good news is you will also be settling for that and accepting it with a gigantic smile on your face. I thought so. So after that AD, hit that middle D and then kind of pause for a second. Let the beat catch up with you. Bar the first fret of the B and the high E, hit that twice. 
and then pinky or third finger but I like pinky because I'm lazy uh, goes to the third fret of the high E now you're gonna kind of want to pause there but you need to hit the D straight after it again the middle one so you've come from here Then, this is where it does that Dorian thing for the first time. Um, hit the open B, then the A, back to the D. Okay. It's really cool. So if I come from here, Beautiful JPJ, beautiful. It's funny because JPJ doesn't usually give me a headache. Jimmy does. Getting all the Zeppelin headaches today, aren't I? There's a crap joke in there somewhere. I'm not. I'm not going to say. You've already. You know the. You know the crap joke that I was going to make. I'm not making it. Right. Next part. Um, whilst that A and D are ringing out, I kind of felt like this time the synth. Um, did this. So the only difference is this time we're putting in um, a D on the fifth fret of the A string before going to the seventh fret of the D. So makes it a bit tricky because you might accidentally clip that low D that you want droning out. So try your best to kind of keep your thumb out of the way. After that, it's the same. You're going to go to um, 10 and 8, 12 and 10, 14, 12, and then that A, D again. And then we've got this cool little phrase. So after the low A and D from previous, you're going to go A and middle D. And we've got this little harmony at the top. It's a, a minor third stretch. 10th fret of the B with the third finger, eighth fret of the high E with the index. The shape you're gonna go afterwards, I'll just give it you so you can prep, is major third from eight to seven. So if you get that down, then it should be a little bit easier. Um, the picking pattern goes A, D, back to that middle D with the thumb, after the pinch. Straight back to that major third, and then you're gonna bounce on that middle D twice, which is two fingers sped. Come on, mate. Twice, uh, and then just hit the uh, eighth fret of the B by itself. Next pattern is a repeat. Yes, it's this one again. Do you remember it? If you don't, what are you doing here? Go back. You got work to do. Next phrase is another repeat. Thank God. By this point, I was like, I'm running out of memory. But fortunately, I think he was too, so he stuck in another repeat. It's this one. And then to finish, we have that same climb up the fretboard um, that started from the fifth fret of the A string. But we don't rush into the last two notes uh, the same way that we did in the kind of introduction cycle because it's going into that kind of blossoming, slightly dissonant section. Very cool. So let me just play that last little connected phrase. At this point, we are going to play this beautiful chord. Now, you can think of it a couple of ways, like playing a B flat, but with the open E, or like taking 
an A major shape and just moving it up a fret. Again, leaving the open A. And I just want you to brush from the D string to the open A. How many times do I have to say open A? Too many. And then the first time, just take a D major shape and move it up a fret to E flat. Just brush the top three strings. But the second time, what you can do is put the pinky on the fifth fret of the high E. Because the chord changes. Or you could play it with index second, third, a little diagonal line. There are other ways to play that first chord, um, kind of like this. But I don't know, I kind of like this one because it, it's easier, but it feels more kind of brittle and delicate, like on the track. And I feel like you get a better sustain. Jimmy just thought, sod this, I'm playing power chords, good lad. So we're going to start with um, a power chord on the third fret of the A string, it would be the position of C. And even though you never really kind of play them as power chords, it's like alternating notes, you might as well have the shape on, right? Because we're going to do this. So hit the root note and then slide up a tone to D. When you get there, you're going to be hitting the perfect fifth of D, right? Three times. Root, slide, three perfect fifths. You kind of get the sound of the slide back um, when you go back to the C as well, which is nice. On what would be the third repeat, um, slide up, hit the perfect fifth once, and then I like to hit that open D as a transition. Because I'm in um, drop D, um, I'm going with a flat third finger here on the third fret of the low D. Slide up to the fifth fret. And then flat bar, flat roll to the fifth fret of the A and then come back to the third fret with the index finger. You can give it a little bit of vibrato. If you wanted it even tidier, you could slide up with the third finger, use your pinky on the A string. I don't think Jimmy would do that. And then index finger, third fret of the low D, third fret of the A, open, and then give the third fret of the D a slight pull, and then the open D. That's the way I like to play that section. On what would be the final repeat of that, you can just take that C and slide it up to the D, um, the root, and give it a little bit of vibrato as it kind of um, sustains out into the synth part again of the verse or whatever. I like to use my third finger there because it's just stronger and I feel like I've got more control of the vibrato. It's just, just me, but you can use your index if you want, no problem. <laughs> it's just as good. I'm just being difficult. Now, there's not much else to learn. And if there are a lot more kind of variants in the synth work, I think what I gave you from the opening should give you enough kind of examples of what's going on musically. And then you can go the extra mile and work stuff out. Just change them each time. Have fun if you're playing it with the track. 
yeah, you might be put off if it's different and you're going to want to work it out each time. But um, if you're playing it by yourself, doing like a cool little cover, do what you want. I do. And it's great fun. Now the solo, I know you're going to go, ah, but I think what we could do instead of going through it, because for me, it's, um, it's one of those solos that's, it seems again, quite improvised and sporadic. So I kind of prefer to take a look at what's going on um, than, than sort of work those ones out when I don't feel like they're as like solidly structured. So because we're in drop D, I just decided to play my little scale example like this. So what I'm doing there is hitting the root note as a droned bass note. Hitting the root again, but the fifth fret of the A. Root, major second, minor third. Sounds quite dark at this point. Slide up to the 10, 12. Perfect fourth, perfect fifth. And then that major six minus seven octave. I love Dorian. Um, I've probably said this before, but it always reminds me of like, if you're a gamer, like playing like Halo, um, or maybe like Destiny, things like that, where you have these big kind of desolate maps and you, and you feel a bit lonely and sad in space. The major sixth is when you like find something special in the woods, right? And everything's just going to be all right. Save the game, go out, pint, home, bed. But what I want you to do is kind of learn that scale, understand it. If you're a bit confused, go and check out my little lesson that I did on modes and see if you can work out some of the things that he's doing. Um, and maybe create yourself a little backing track and have a little improvise yourself, have some fun. You know, if I just had this drone going. I hope you enjoyed that. My little rendition of No Quarter. Beautiful tune. Not gonna lie, when I first hit play on the synth, I thought, what have I let myself in for here? But after a few hours, let's just say, I was like, you know what? I'm getting there. This is gonna be all right. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, if you're a bit lost and you'd like some extra clarity on my little version of this, as always, you can check out the tab on my Patreon. 
and uh, if you need any extra help or advice, you can always shoot me a DM. Come hang out, it's fun. And whilst we are here wrapping things up, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell next to it, drop a comment below. I thought if I just went through it fast enough, you wouldn't even hear me. You wouldn't notice. You'd just be like, oh my God, what have I done? I won't go on about it, as promised, but when I do mention it, you do perform. So thank you. I'm going to go because I have to edit this video and get it out immediately because it's been a very busy week. Saw Russell Brand on Wednesday. Then the Queen died. What's going on? This are. Anyway, I hope you're all good. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.